Let's take a look at the St. Petersburg Paradox. Now, the St. Petersburg Paradox is a gambling game, and it's a game that is played by flipping a fair coin until it comes up tails. The total number of flips N determines the prize of the payoff, which equals $2 raised to the nth power. And the game ends when a tails comes up. So if the coin comes up tails the first time, the prize is $2 raised to the first power, or $2. If the coin comes up tails the second time, the prize is $2 raised to the second power, which is $4, etc. So here's a table of the payoffs, the probabilities, and the expected payoffs. And we've done this just for the first 10 flips of the coin. So if tails comes up on the first flip, there's a one-half chance of doing that. It's a fair coin. And the payoff is 2 to the first power, or $2. If it comes up on the second flip, there, that means we flip heads, which has a 50% chance, or one-half chance. And then a tail, which has a one-half chance. So that's the probability is one quarter. And the payoff is 2 to the second power, which is $4. If we go to the third flip, so we flip head, head, tail, that's going to be a one-eighth chance of doing that, and the payoff is 2 to the third power, which is $8, etc. And you can get the expected payoff by taking the probability times the prize. So one-half times $2 is a dollar, one-quarter times $4 is a dollar. You'll notice that in that right-hand column, the expected payoff is always a dollar. And if we had continued this out to 50 periods or 100 periods or 1,000 periods, the expected payoff still would have been a dollar for that toss. So um, if you think about it, they all have the same expected value. Now, I'm sorry, they all have the expected, same expected payoff. Now, the expected value of the game is going to be the sum of the expected payoffs of all these possible consequences. And there are going to be an infinite number of these $1 payoffs. So this sum or this expected value is going to be an infinite number of dollars. So if you have a rational gambler, a person who only values money and whose desire for an extra dollar doesn't depend on the size of his wealth, that is, that would be a person who whether they are poor or they are as rich as Bill Gates, one dollar gives them the same extra level of satisfaction, so they, they still enjoy it just as much, then they would enter the game for an amount less than the expected value. Since the expected value is infinite, the rational gambler would play no matter how large the finite entry price is. Think about that. So someone could charge you $100, but the payoff, the expected value is, is infinite. You'd pay 100 to play. You'd pl pay 1,000 to play, or 10,000, or a million. But people have done experiments with this, and if you think about yourself, in reality, very few people would pay even $25 to play this game. You know, if I asked the viewers to um, comment on this, very few of you would pay $25 to play this game. You might play, pay, you know, a few bucks to play, but you're certainly not going to pay hundreds of dollars to play. And that, here lies the paradox. The paradox says that you should be willing to pay any amount to get into the game, but you're not willing to do that. And this idea was discovered by the Swiss, Swiss mathematician Nicholas Bernoulli and his brother Daniel published it in the St. Petersburg Academy Proceedings in 1738, hence the name St. Petersburg Paradox. And Bernoulli's reaction to the problem was that maybe instead of looking at expected value, we should be looking at utility. And from economics, we know utility is the amount of satisfaction that somebody gets. And what, what we assume here is that at some point the person reaches a, satur a saturation point. So a good example of this is consider the example of eating ice cream. 
Each tablespoon gives that person an equal pleasure, and we'll call it one util. Once this person's reached 32 tablespoons, which is quite a bit of ice cream, he can't enjoy it anymore. So any additional ice cream over 32 tablespoons gives him only the satisfaction he received from 32 tablespoons. So we're not going to assume that it makes him sick and he get, actually gets less satisfaction. He can always just throw the ice cream away. So let's look at a table here. So here we have the same sort of um, payoffs or same probabilities, okay, same payoffs, but we're going to assume that the utils of the prize or the satisfaction this person gets from each um, amount of ice cream stops going up after they reach 32 tablespoons. So you can see in the beginning the expected value, you know, uh, the probability times the prize gives us, or I'm sorry, the probability times the uh, utils for the prize gives us um, an expected utility of one, etc. But once we get down here to number six, okay, six, um, n is equal to six, it would be like six tosses of the coin. The probability is one sixty-fourth. You're only getting 32 utils of satisfaction, so the expected utility is 0.5. And if you work this out, the sum of the last column now is not infinite, but actually asymptotically approaches 6. So here it says that the rational ice cream eater would pay anything up to the cost of 6 tablespoons to play this game. And this seems a little bit more reasonable in terms of um, playing this game. Okay. could still be too high, but that's a little bit more reasonable. Um, does the St. Petersburg paradox mean that expected value must be infinite? Um, well, the concept of diminishing marginal utility first discussed by Bernoulli can be used to deal with this problem. Okay. The expected value can be infinite, but Bernoulli used this diminishing marginal utility. And if you remember from economics class, diminishing marginal utility basically says that as you get more and more of something, you get less and less extra satisfaction, less extra utility from consuming it or from getting it. It's probably safe to say that if you took someone who, was, who had very, very little money and you gave them $1,000, they would get a lot of satisfaction out of that. But if you gave somebody as wealthy as a Warren Buffett or a Bill Gates $1,000, it's, all, it's meaningless to them. They are so wealthy, $1,000 means nothing to them. Even a million dollars doesn't mean much. That's not to say that they would waste that money, but they don't get the same sort of extra utility they got when they, made, when they got their first million. So what Bernoulli suggested is that perhaps a realistic measure of the utility of money might be given by the logarithm of the amount. So the utils equals the log of the dollars. And so here we've redone this. We have the prizes back again instead of tablespoons. And this is going to be the log of $2. This is going to be the log of $4, the log of $8. And if we look at the expected utility, we're going to take the probability times the utils of the prize and multiply them together. And if we do all that, what do we see here? We see that utility continues to go down over time. Now, if you work this out, the sum of the expected values is not infinite, and it reaches a limit of about uh, 0.602 utils, or about $4. So here the rational gambler would pay any sum less than $4 to play. And um, while we don't actually know what people's utility is, this might be a reasonable approximation. Okay? Probably people would pay $4 to play this game, okay? or, or around $4. Would they pay $25? Probably not. Would they pay $100? You know, almost certainly not but probably a lot of people would pay four dollars. So, you know, here's a way that, that um, Bernoulli has figured out to deal with this paradox where you have this infinite expected value, yet you wouldn't pay in, 
infinite amount for it. So that's a little bit of an introduction to the St. Petersburg paradox. You can certainly use different kinds of payoffs instead of two to the nth power. You can have other kinds of payoffs and, and uh, the game is going to look differently depending on how you set that up. But, but this gives you a basic idea of how, um, well, one mathematician slash statistician dealt with this problem and how economists will, would deal with this kind of problem.